Good evening, everyone. Myself, Ashdeep Singh, Assistant Professor, Mira Medical Institute of Nursing and Hospital of Ohud. So, today I'm going to explain you about a topic that is, the name of the topic is polium lipis. So, it's a very popular disease and it's a disease, we can say that the major health problems, it's one of the major health problems of India. And uh, to stop this disease or prevent the cases of this disease, mainly in the children up to five years of age. So we are having, uh, the governments have implemented the national uh, immunization program related to the poliomyelitis, that is pulse poliomyelization program. So let's start with the topic. First of all, is the definition of the poliomyelitis. So, poliomyelitis is an acute infectious viral disease of children caused by an RNA poliovirus. So, that is the causative organism for poliovirus. That is RNA poliovirus. Second thing is, basically affecting the human alimentary tract, but may also infect the central nervous system. So, uh, the causative organism is RNA poliovirus. And, uh, second thing is the it mainly affects two of the organ systems or the uh, we can say the organs or the organ system. First is the alimentary tract, and second one is the central nervous system. Uh, uh, we call it a, it as a CNS. That is the brain and the spinal cord are mainly affected under this, and it is transmitted by the fecal oral route. Okay, so uh, it is uh, the transmission is mainly by the fecal oral route, and Characterized by the sudden onset, what are the symptoms of this disease? Is first, of, uh, first of all, is as we already know, infection. So there is a fever, headache, malaise, anorexia, vomiting, constipation, and abdominal pain. So these are the basic and the important symptoms of a person or the children uh, who uh, might be affected with the uh, this type of disease that is poliomyelitis. Okay. And there may be a pain in the neck and back and stiffness of the neck. So that can also be a main sign symptom for polio. Okay, so that was about the definition that it is caused by a RNA poliovirus and basically affecting alimentary tract and a central nervous system that includes the spinal cord and the brain. And uh, rest is about the main symptoms. Okay. Next, we will talk about the problem. So. In India, we will talk about the problem in India. In Southeast Asia region, it was India was the only country reporting polio cases in 2005. So, in total of the Southeast Asia uh, region, so India was the only country in which the cases of this disease were reported in 2005, and 66 cases were there in 2005. And during January 2011 to March 2012, there was an interruption of the endemic wild polio virus circulation in India and last case of WP uh, V3 was reported on 22nd October 2010 in Pakur, Jharkhand. Okay, so that is about the stat that uh, very less number of the cases are present in India. So uh, despite this we are continuing or uh, implementing the pulse polymerization program so that we might be able to eradicate this disease from our country. Okay, so very less number of cases were reported a decade before, and uh, uh, we can say that approximately we have uh, eradicated uh, this disease from India, but uh, there is no any official, uh, uh, we can say that uh, declaration by any of the government if we have completely eradicated the pulse poli uh, polio disease from India. Okay, so we are continuing with this objective that we uh, uh, one day there might. Uh, uh, there will be the day uh, when there is no risk or when there will be uh, no single uh, children or any of the adults uh, who will be having uh, uh, this type of disease. Okay. Next is epidemiological factors are the main factors uh, that are responsible for this uh, diseases. First of all is the epidemiological factors or the causative factors includes the agent factors. So as I have already explained that the causative organism is RNA poliovirus. 
which has three serotypes, one, two, and three, and zero type one is cause of outbreak of paralytic poliomyelitis, and that is the you can say that the main symptom that we can say that uh, uh, the children uh, uh, are mostly handicapped uh, when they are uh, suffering from the polio disease. Okay, so that is uh, because of this paralytic poliomyelitis. The virus can live in feces for six months and in water for four months. Okay, so fecal oral route is the uh, main mode of transmission. Next is the reservoir of infection. Man is the only reservoir of infection. So, uh, man spreads this disease to the other person. So, there are subclinical and mild infections, uh, which are the cause of most of the spread of infection. So, what is about uh, it is subclinical when uh, the patient is infected, the person is infected, but the symptoms are not clear cut, and we can't uh, say that what type of disease. Uh, is that uh, from which that specific person is suffering okay so that type of case is subclinical and which <coughs> which, <coughs> which are the cause of most of the spread of infection and there is no animal reservoir so the humans are the only reservoir of this infection next is infectious material so what type of infectious material is there that causes uh, the uh, we can say that the, this type of disease uh, it includes the feces and the oropharyngeal secretion. That is the body uh, uh, secretions and the feces. The excreta of the human is the main source uh, or acts as the infectious material uh, that acts as the main source for the uh, uh, transmission of this disease. Next is period of communicability. 7 to 10 days before and about 2 to 3 weeks after the onset of symptoms. So that is the period of communicability by which this uh, virus can uh, affect the other human beings. Okay, so these were the agent factors. Next, coming to the host factors. First of all, is the age. So all age groups are affected, as I've already said. But the children in the uh, age uh, group of six months to three years are mostly affected. Okay, and are more susceptible than adults. Okay, so uh, if you are ever asked in any of, of the viva question that what is the uh, uh, we can say that the uh, target group for the polio virus that is six months to three years. We can say that. Next sex. Uh, se uh, next is the uh, sex or gender. More males are affected than the females. Okay, and there is a ratio that is three ratio one. If three of the males are affected by this virus, then only a single uh, female will be uh, affected by this virus. Okay, if we are comparing male and female. Then next are the risk factors. What are the various risk factors that can cause or make a host a host? Okay, that includes fatigue, trauma, intramuscular injections in which uh, uh, that are handled in a um, careless manner, and operative procedures. Same, uh, the infectious infection uh, will be a cause in that case. And on head and neck and tooth extraction procedures can also cause this type of infection. For example, performed during the epidemic of polio immunization and alum containing dpt vaccine okay so that is about the risk factors that uh, uh, what are the various risk factors that can make a person uh, affected from this infection okay next is the immunity after birth up to six months maternal antibodies protect the infant an attack of the polio affords immunity which is type specific and does not protect against the other two types okay so that is the type of immunity after birth up to six months maternal antibodies that are transmitted uh, that are transferred from the mother to the uh, fetus or the newborn baby that protects the child up to six months after that we have to provide the vaccination uh, like the oral poly vaccine or uh, the other type uh, so that we might be able to uh, make the child uh, or we can prevent the child of uh, six months to three years of age. Uh, we are covering under this vaccination program, we are covering the children under the five years of age. Okay, so that is type two uh, under the immunity. Next are the environmental factors. What are the various environmental factors? So, uh, as uh, seen in an average manner, that during June to September, most cases occur. So, that is the time period in which most of the cases of this infection occurs. Pies, foods, and contaminated water are environmental sources of infection. So, flies, they can also transmit. Uh, this type of infection, food and contaminated water. Next is poor, poor environmental sanitation and overcrowding help to expose to infection. So these are also the uh, main reasons why uh, or how 
this disease can spread to the another person. Next is about the modes of transmission. So what are the various modes? As I have already explained, first and the foremost is the fecal oral route. Uh, it includes the flies, fecal contaminated food, water, vegetables, uh, fruits and milk are responsible for indirectly transmitting that disease. So these are the like the flies, fecal contaminated food, contaminated water, vegetables, fruits. All of these are the uh, acts as an indirect uh, mode of transmission. Okay, and directly by contaminated fingers, and uh, the infection may spread after the acute stage of illness. So that is the type in which the uh, infection spread from the one person to the another, or from one uh, item that is the eatables uh, to the person if they are handled in a careless manner uh, or the hygiene of that food item is not maintained. So that can be uh, acting as a mode of transmission. Next is the droplet infection. During acute phase of disease, when the virus is present in the nasopharyngeal disease is transmitted through droplet infection, like the disease of the tuberculosis and other types who are uh, in which there is the mode of transmission is the droplet infection. Likewise, uh, polio also has some of the cases that are seen that uh, in which uh, the mode of transmission is uh, the droplet infection. Okay, uh, but I would say the major or the main mode of transmission in uh, poliomyelitis is uh, fecal or okay. Next is the about the incubation period. What is the incubation period? So that is an important uh, point. Uh, it is mostly asked in various types of fiber questions. So usually it's seven to fourteen days. So this is the time period, and but it also can range from three to thirty-five days. Okay. So that was about the incubation period. <coughs> Next is about clinical features. What are the various clinical features? So in the definition, I have already explained you about different types of symptoms or the clinical features. Uh, but in this, uh, I have uh, there is a category uh, by which I can explain you uh, in more detail. First of all is the inapparent or that is a subclinical infection. About 91 to 96% of the polio infections are subclinical. That is asymptomatic, as I have already said. And uh, second is the minor illness. About 4%. Of the infections are mild self-limiting infection with no symptoms and the patient recovers quickly it is called abortive polyomyelitis in which uh, uh, the patient uh, recovers quickly okay and four percent of the cases are of mild uh, polyomyelitis uh, so first was subclinical infection second is minor illness and third one is the non-paralytic polio in which there is uh, no paralysis of any type of muscles of the muscle or the stiffness of uh, any of the muscles okay so about one percent of infection with polyvirus are non-paralytical and symptoms include like those of meningitis and stiffness of neck is there but there is no paralysis of the muscles okay pain in the neck and back is present but stiffness uh, but the uh, paralysis is absent so recovery is rapid and last one and the uh, most popular is the paralytic polio. Less than 1% cases of the infections progress to the major illness involving CNS and causes varying degree of the paralysis. And they are, these are paralytic polio type. So this is the type in which the patient or the person's uh, person, uh, there is effect on the muscle and there is a uh, paralysis of the muscle uh, like of the lower limb and the, uh, there is difficulty in walking. So that is the type of paralytic polio. So that was about the clinical features according to the classification. <coughs> Next one is the, uh, so in the paralytic polio, there are another symptoms like it is marked by fever, headache, malaise, anorexia, nausea. Uh, all of these were, uh, uh, while I was explaining you uh, uh, about the definition of the polio matter, these were the main clinical features of the symptom. That I have already explained, a sore throat, muscle pain, and the paralysis of the muscles of the limb, phase of respiration. Okay. And death may occur due to respiratory failure in the pulpit paralysis. Okay. So there may also be the condition of the death. Diagnosis is done by the isolation of the wild polio virus from patient's stool and serological tests. So we perform the stool test of the patient and various types of the other diagnostic techniques to confirm the uh, presence of this disease in the person okay 
Next uh, is about the control of patients. And uh, the main thing is the prevention. So how would we prevent this disease? That is the main thing. Okay. So I have explained you about the clinical features. Now, what are the major uh, preventive measures we have to take uh, if we want to prevent the cases of the, or we want to save our children uh, from this disease? So it includes the immunization and the popular one is the oral polio vaccine, OPB. Uh, likewise, uh, uh, the theme is said that do boon in the key and the major uh, and the uh, popular celebrities are uh, advertising uh, for this uh, noble cause. Uh, okay, so uh, this is for the uh, awareness of the general population so that they might uh, immunize their children with this vaccination. Okay, so that is the uh, that is what I am talking about. So uh, it is divided into two types, active and the passive immunization. So first of all is the active immunization. It is subdivided into two types of vaccines. Uh, like first is the inactivated salk polio vaccine. Okay, this is uh, on the name of the discoverer or the researcher, Dr. Salk. So inactivated salk polio vaccine, IPV. Uh, that is IPV. And second one is the oral that is seven polio vaccine that is also in the name of the discovery Sol can dr Sol can seven so first of all is the inactivated polio vaccine so ipv is constituted from all three uh, types of wpv uh, strains it is a liquid killed vaccine viruses are killed by formaldehyde so this is the vaccine made from the viruses and uh, those who are killed by the formaldehyde. Next, IPV is administered by intramuscular injection, uh, either uh, through the intramuscular route or subcutaneous injection. So uh, this type of vaccine that is salk, salk vaccine is administered in the body of the uh, person or the uh, children uh, through the intramuscular or the subcutaneous uh, injection. Okay. The primary cause of IPV consists of four inoculations. The first dose, three doses are given at the interval of one to two months. And four doses given after six to 12 months. Okay, after the third dose. So that is the duration, time duration in which these four uh, types of doses are given to a specific person. <coughs> Next is the first dose is given usually when the infant is six weeks old so you must note that that four total four types of uh, doses are administered under the ipv and first is given at the six week age okay next prior to the school entry additional doses is recommended and then every five years till the age of 18 years so that is the time period of the duration uh, for example for the ipv vaccine ipv induces humoral antibodies that is igm igg iga but does not induce intestinal or local immunity. So the wild polio uh, virus can still multiply in the intestine and cause can affect others. Okay, so this is the disadvantage. Okay, next, what is the advantage of this type of vaccination? It is safe to administer because it is not a live vaccine. It is a killed vaccine. Can be given safely to the person with immunodeficiency diseases and those on corticosteroid and radiation therapy. We can also give to those person who are on uh, different types of uh, medicinal therapies those are 50 years of age and also can be given during pregnancy so that is the advantage of this vaccination second is and the active immunization is oral or the seven poly vaccine that is the type of vaccine uh, of which two drops are provided to the each children uh, under the five years of age <coughs> okay so it is the most widely used vaccine it contains live attenuated type 1 to 3 polyvirus and it is given in three doses at monthly intervals as a part of the national immunization program. So that is the program uh, that I was talking about, national immunization program that is also known as pulse poly immunization program. And first dose is given at six weeks of age of the infant and second and third doses are given at 10th and 14th week. A zero dose is given to all infants in the health institutions. Okay. so total all of the uh, newborn babies they are administered with this dose okay uh, all doses of pv are given concurrently with dpt and bcg vaccine they are also 
given along with that the booster dose is given in 16 to 24 months so what is the dose and mode of administration on this type of vaccine it is two drops of opv are given orally with the dropper supplied with the vial of the oral polio vaccine so there is a vial and there is a dropper and one and the two drops are given to each children or, or having the specified age and two drops are orally given so as to prevent the cases if the child spits it out then they feed it and most of the times uh, sometimes the children doesn't like the taste of this vaccine they spit it out so you have to give it again repeat it the child's neck is tilted back this is the uh, procedure how we can uh, give uh, the vaccine to the child the child's neck is, is tilted back His cheeks are squeezed gently your nose is pinched to make the mouth open so uh, as soon as the mouth uh, the child will open his mouth his or her mouth you have to put two do uh, drops in the uh, mouth of the children and two drops of the vaccine are dropped into the child's mouth over his tongue with the help of drop this is the procedure how will, uh, we would provide the vaccine next there are some contraindications relating with the this vaccination that is oral poly vaccine child having diarrhea should not be given this vaccine vomiting descent pain fever should not be given opv there is no adverse effects effect of breastfeeding on the effectiveness of opv hot fluids such as milk should not be given for at least half an hour after giving the vaccine it should be explained to the parent so that is a minor precaution that uh, the parents have to take after the administration of the vaccine that uh, if the vaccine is given to the children so uh, for 30 minutes nothing should be given to the children okay next is <coughs> about the passive immunization so uh, mainly i would say uh, if uh, we are preventing the or we are success succeeding in uh, preventing the cases of uh, uh, pulse polio uh, polio in our country so that is uh, uh, because of this national immunization program against the uh, uh, polio in which we are providing the opv and opv is the widely used and the most widely used vaccine for the uh, prevention of the cases of polio okay so coming to the passive immunization passive immunization can be done with normal human immunoglobin that is ig uh, but the need of the passive immunization are almost eliminated because of the bifurcated active immunization so we don't need to have passive immunization because we are having a effective active immunization in our country or at the world level so that is uh, i would say that's enough uh, uh, and that's helping us to eradicate the disease from our country or at the world level okay and at last i would explain the pulse polio immunization and while vaccine for these what is pulse polio immunization so that is the program that i was uh, explaining about pulse polio immunization in india ppv was conducted first time which consists of two rounds of immunization six weeks part on 9th december 1995 and 20th january 1996 so first of all this immunization program was started in delhi only and after that uh, from 20th january or uh, on the later uh, dates this program was also administered or the service were also provided to uh, throughout india so as to prevent the cases of polio and national immunization days have become the largest public health campaigns in india since then and ppis are when oral polio vaccine is given to all children that is from 0 to 5 years of age in the country on a single day regardless of the child's previous immunization regardless of the child's previous immunization rather the children has taken the two drops of uh, uh, polio vaccine in the previous session or not you have to give two drops to each children uh, of up to 5 years of age okay so that is the guidelines under this program that you have to provide cover each and every children regardless he or she has taken the previous doses of oral polio vaccine okay in ppi two rounds of immunization are carried out four to six weeks up, apart during low transmission season of polio from november to february and in india peak transmission is from june to september so that is from june to september the peak season is there 
and the doses of OPI during the PPI are extra doses and do not replace doses to save during routine immunization. So that is about the PPI, that is pulse polio immunization. So that is the way or the mechanism by which we are uh, able to eradicate, we are uh, able to uh, nearly eradicate this disease from uh, our country. Okay, And at last, and today's lecture is the vaccine violator. Most of the students who are listening to my lecture uh, have done their duties in uh, the immunization programs or the campaigns. So uh, uh, there is a while on which there is a VVM is there. Uh, so I am going to explain about that. What is VVM? That is vaccine wall monitor. So that is, uh, we can say that a scale that measures that or that tells us that rather this vaccine is now safe for the use or not, because we have to <coughs> maintain the temperature of the vaccine, so minus 2 to uh, 8 degrees centigrade or 2 to 8 degrees centigrade. Okay, so that is, uh, I would say that uh, uh, oral poly vaccine is very heat sensitive. So we have to maintain the uh, very low temperature. So there is a vaccine vial monitor uh, because it tells us that if uh, there is increase in the temperature because uh, we have to uh, get that vaccine uh, while of the vac uh, while uh, filled of the vaccine out of the ice box and as you uh, will get that uh, while out of the box it will uh, its temperature will uh, start rising and after some time or uh, within some minutes or uh, uh, the temperature of the vial will raise and there are the chances that the vaccine can be uh, not suitable for the use and this is the vaccine wall monitor that would tell you that uh, you have to use that vaccine or uh, you have to discard that vaccine okay that is vaccine wall monitor so what is that vaccine wall monitor is a small heat sensitive material placed on a vaccine wall to see the effect of heat exposure on the vaccine okay so uh, heat uh, when the vaccine is exposed to the heat so it will tell us about the changes in the vaccine each pulse polio vial has to monitor to see its effectiveness and color monitors or labels are put on the vaccine vials. Each label has a circle of deep blue color. So that is a, a deep blue color a circle is present and inside it is a white square which is a heat sensitive and changes color and become blue if the vaccine vial is exposed to high temperature. Okay, clear. So <clears throat> white square is present and it will change its color and it will become blue and if uh, it is not suitable or uh, the high temperatures has discarded the effectiveness of that vaccine okay and if so happens the vaccine should not be used that it has become ineffective so that is uh, the complete explanation about vaccine warranty monitor so uh, that is the question that's mainly asked in the viva exams of either the ps or the post basic or the gm uh, so mainly the external examiner uh, can ask this type of question. So you must uh, read it out and you must be able to tell or give answer to the external exam. Okay. So that was all about the today's topic. That was polio mellitus. Okay. So thank you everyone for your valuable time. And uh, I will meet you in next week with a new topic, a new disease or new topic that will be benefic uh, very beneficial for you. So uh, you might, uh, you must uh, uh, be in contact with me. And so you must, um, I would say, that subscribe to my channel and click on the all notification button so that uh, whenever uh, I would post a new video, you would get a notification. So thanks for your coordination, cooperation, or your support. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much.